Okay, all right. So today we'll be discussing a very short but important topic. We'll be talking about the Missile Development Program of India. To be very specific, the Integrated Guided Missile Development Program of India. Now before we start this, I just want to ask a small question. What do you understand by the terminology a missile? The second question would be what is the difference between a missile and a rocket? Rockets are more or less unguided. You cannot guide them. You cannot do course correction midway. While in missiles, they have their own guidance system. Which means after firing, if the target moves, a missile has the capability to change its course midway and still go and attack the target. This is the main difference between a rocket and a missile. So we'll come to the Integrated Guided Missile Development Program of India. This program was conceived by one of the greatest presidents of India, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. And just like the visionary that we had, which we studied in space technology, Dr. Vikram Sarabhai, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam also wanted to provide India self-sufficiency in the field of missile technology for India. He started this program in 1983 and started development of multiple missiles within this program and finally by 2012 this missile system was completed. Now when you come and talk about this missile system, this missile system has five major missiles, five classes of missiles. We have the Agni series, the Prithvi series, the Trishul series, Akash and Nag. So these are the five missiles, these names you have to learn it by heart. The five missiles that were developed under the integrated guided Missile Development Program. Now before we go further, please click on the link given in the description below and download our new IAS app so that you can get free content from the app and augment your preparation for UPSC. Now moving forward with the class. The first one, we will jump into the first one. The Agni series of missiles. The Agni series of missiles are actually called ballistic missiles. Ballistic missiles. Any of you have any idea what ballistic missiles are? The major difference between ballistic missile and the other class of missile which is called cruise missiles is that ballistic missiles when they are fired they exit the atmosphere of the earth. They exit the atmosphere of the earth travel in space. What did we discuss in our class? Space is an altitude of 100 kilometers. These missiles has a capacity to be launched at an altitude over 100 kilometers, travel in space and during that travel designate and find out its targets and then make a re-entry back into the Earth's atmosphere and then strike the target. So the Agni series of missiles are a ballistic set of missiles. They are ballistic missiles. And their range go from medium to very, very long range, which is called ICBMs, Intercontinental Ballistic Missiles. We'll talk about that in a minute. After Agni, we come to the Prithvi. The Prithvi again is a, it's not a ballistic missile so as or so. It also has somewhat of a parabolic path itself, but it does not exit the atmosphere. So it is considered a short range surface to surface missile. Keep in mind, even Agni is a surface-to-surface -surface missile. Okay. Then you come to Trishul. Trishul is a short-range, low-level. Its, its range is low, surface-to-air missile. Agni was a surface-to-surface -surface missile. Prithi was a surface-to-surface -surface missile. Trishul is a surface-to-air missile. Basically, it means it is going to take down aerial targets, planes and drones. Then you come to Akash. Akash again is a medium range surface to air missile similar to that of Trishul. And finally we come to the last category which is Nag. The Nag missile. This is an anti-tank missile. Okay, so five classes of missiles. We have the Agni, Prithvi, Trishul, Akash and Nag. So we will deal with each one of them separately. 
we'll come to the first one the agni series of missiles if you've been following you if you've been following news then you will know the agni 5 missile has been in news quite often so coming and talking about the agni series of missiles agni series of missiles is a nuclear capable nuclear ballistic set of missiles which means their warhead the real bomb which is set on top of the missile the warhead of the missile is nuclear warhead it will cause significant damage and when you talk about this we have five agni series of missiles starting from 1 2 3 4 and finally 5 however all the five all the five agni missiles are not intercontinental ballistic missiles or their ranges is not very very large you start from 1 to 4 these are not intercontinental ballistic missiles only the agni 5 is an intercontinental ballistic missile intercontinental ballistic missiles are those missiles which have a range greater than 5000 km okay and all of these missiles have been developed by drdo in fact drdo is also working on the next missile under the series which is the agni 6 and it is going to be a bit more special regarding the other five cases so here is a short table for you to understand agni 1 is considered a srbm which is short range ballistic missile it has a range of around 700 to 800 even though 700 to 800 sounds very long for us for a ballistic missile it is considered a short range that is why it's called a short range ballistic missile then comes agni 2 which is a medium range ballistic missile from 2000 to 2500 kilometers the agni 3 is an intermediate range ballistic missile with 3500 km as the range agni 4 as well is an intercontinental inter intermediate ballistic missile with a small increase in range from 3500 to 4000 but it's only agni 5 which is an intercontinental ballistic missile which has a range of above 5000 so this has a range from 5500 to 5800 km and the next coming agni series is the agni 6 missile which is again an icbm which is intercontinental ballistic missile but this missile will have a range from 10000 to 12000 km in addition to that the agni 6 missile will also be an mirv it's a special characteristics of a missile mirv stands for multiple independently targetable reentry vehicle if you did not understand that it is simple till now all the missiles that we have it's like it's one missile it'll have one warhead the entire missile will be flown or fired it will find out its target and a single missile will go and hit its target but with mirv or multiple independently targetable re reentry vehicle the concept is inside the main warhead you will have multiple smaller warheads So once the missile is fired and when it is about to hit the target the main missile itself will break apart and split into multiple different warheads altogether one missile will turn into multiple missiles and all these missiles will go and target its different different go and attack each of its targets differently so from one missile you can conduct a attack on multiple targets that is the concept regarding mirv technology if you have seen the first movie iron man iron man 1 this technology is used in that movie he uses this technology in the missile called jericho missile if you remember that movie this is the same technology that we are going to use so this is regarding the agni missile you can just see a range here our agni 5 has a range of 5000 km so it can go very very high it can all go all the way it can cover almost regions of china and still go beyond that is the range with which agni can actually fire okay the next one we'll come to the prithvi series of missiles now the prithvi series of missiles are short range missiles i told you agni series are medium range to long range but prithvi series of missiles are short range missiles now they are not always nuclear they don't have a nuclear warhead all the time but they are considered a nuclear capable missile which means you can either put a nuclear warhead 
or a normal conventional warhead. It is not necessary all Prithvi missiles will have a nuclear warhead. Both nuclear and conventional can be added to the Prithvi series. And one of the biggest advantage of the Prithvi series is that they are highly mobile, which can, which means they are road mobile. There are certain, uh, you know, mobiles or vehicles which can carry these missiles to different different parts of the country and fire the missile from wherever the operation actually demands. So that is the advantage of the Prithvi missiles. Okay. Now Prithvi in itself, we have three variants. We have the Prithvi one which is mostly for the army, the Prithvi 2 for the air force and the Prithvi 3 for the navy. Of the three different variations, army variant has the shortest range of 150 kilometers, while air force has a longer range of 250 kilometers and navy has the longest range of 350 kilometers. And the naval version of Prithvi, which is Prithvi 3, is given a different name and that name is called Dhanush. Okay, I'll just show you an image here. This is the carrier, these vehicles here, is the carrier of the Prithvi series of missiles. And the first image that you see here, this is the army version. The next one that you see is the air force version. And finally, the one that you see from the deck of a ship, these, this is the naval version. Therefore, it is called a Dhanush. You know what Dhanush means? What is Dhanush? Bow. Exactly. You know why that? Why this missile was given the name? Because a ship is more or less an unstable platform compared to that of land. So the for stability itself, a big setup is made like this. Something like a bow is given to the ship here. And this gives stability to the system and from that it is fired. So because of that it is called the Thanush system. Okay. So this is the three different series in the Prithvi series. Next we'll go to the Trishul series. I told you Trishul is an surface to air missile. Now the difference if you're getting confused I'll just explain it to them. You can classify sis, did, uh, missiles into different categories based on from where it is launched and what it is attacking. So like that we have the surface to surface missile when it is launched from the surface and goes and attacks the target on the surface. We have surface to air missile or SAM launched from the surface to attack any aerial target. Air to air missile launched from a flying platform to attack another flying, flat, flying platform and air to ground missiles. Not air to, it wouldn't say air to surface, it's called air to ground. This concept is same from a flying platform to the surface. So these are the different missiles which are there. And then we finally have the anti-tank also, we'll talk about that. So in this case of Trishul, the Trishul is considered a short range missile. It only has a range of 9 kilometers. Okay, these missiles were meant for quick reaction missiles. For example, if you are under attack, quickly we need to deploy a missile to counter that attack. That is why Trishuls are considered quick reaction missiles. Okay, this was developed by DRDO. However, during the process of its development, many complications and delays came up. And because of that factor, Trishul was never put under production. So, technically speaking, we don't have a Trishul system in India, even though Trishul was originally planned under the Integrated Guided Missile System Program of India. So, what do we do use instead of that? Instead of the Trishul missile system, we use another missile system called the Barak system. Now, the Barak system is actually a development between India and Israel. India and Israel came together and developed the Barak system. And the Barak system is actually considered one of the most successful interceptor missiles in the world. Currently, we are using the Barak 8. Barak 8 missiles which is the best interceptor missiles in the world as of now. Alright, now next we'll go to the Akash missiles. The Akash missiles are supersonic, again surface to air missiles. They are SAMs again, they are shot from the surface to shoot down any enemy 
aerial threat when any uh, any part of india is under aerial threat from the neighbors then in some cases the akash missiles are shot to take down these targets they are very very highly capable missile systems and they have a range of 25 kilometers that's why they are considered a medium range missiles okay they considered medium range missiles and they can go up to an altitude of 18 kilometers Akash missiles is extensive, ex extensively being used by the Indian Air Force and it is one of the most successful missile systems that we have in India. Alright? And the next one, we will go to the NAG, which has been in news a lot recently, mainly because of the India-China conflict. The NAG is actually a third generation, it is basically an anti-tank guided missile. Now this is what you have to understand. It's an anti-tank missile, at the same time it's a guided missile as well. Which means, these missiles are going to be used to destroy tanks. In the theatre of war or in warfare, tanks become a major opponent for infantry units. For humans, infantry units are real people who are holding the gun and going and capturing a certain region. For them, tanks are a very big danger. So because of that, to counter tanks, we use anti-tank missiles. Now the speciality of NAG is that, NAG is an anti-tank missile, but at the same time it is a guided missile as well. Which means, if there is a tank which is moving and firing at the troops, and we fire an anti-tank missile, just like the tank is moving, the missile also will follow that and hit the target. That is the speciality of the NAG missile. It also uses the technology of fire and forget. Okay, you have to fire it, once it locks on, forget about it, it is definitely going to hit the target. That's why it's called a fire and forget missile. And under NAG the development we have three different variants. It's called Propsina, Prospina, Helena and Man Portable Anti-Tank Guided Missile. Now NAG has recently come in news a lot because many test firing of different variations or versions of this has been done. To be more precise, very very recently, a variant of Helena was fired, two variants of Helena in fact was fired. The first one was normally called Helena, the second one was called Dhruvastra. But even then we only consider Nag having three variants. Why do we say that? See, this is why you have to know this. Prospina, which is there, it's basically fired from a specialized carrier which is called Namika. The Prospina tank or the Prospina missile has to be fired from a specialized carrier and that carrier is called Namika and the full form of Namika is Nag missile carrier. It's specially made for firing this Nag missile or the Prospina missile. But then you come to Helena. Helena simply stands for helicopter version, helicopter, helicopter launched NAG missile. So these missiles can be launched from helicopters as well. That is why it is called Helena. The army uses the helicopter Rudra and that is why we still recently we only had Helena. However, Air Force uses a helicopter called Dhruv. And those NAG missiles which can be launched from Dhruv helicopter which is used by the Air Force, that is why it is called Dhruvastra. Is that clear? Did you understand the difference between Helena and Dhruvastra? Helena is an army version of NAG while Dhruvastra is the Air Force version of NAG. And finally we come to the man portable anti-tank guided missile. Just as the name says, it can be carried by a man on his shoulders and if need be, you can fire it from your shoulder or you can launch it on the ground and fire it from the ground itself. Okay, and because these have very various uh, ranges as well, the Prospina has a range of 500 meters which is very close to a range of 4 kilometers. Okay, Helena has a added range because if it's a helicopter launched system, it has a very considerably a longer range which is still 10 kilometers, 
while man portable anti tank guided missile it has a range of 2.5 kilometers so i'll just show you the image this carrier here the specialized carrier here this is what is the namika and what we are firing that you the missile that you're going and seeing there is the prospina on the other hand here you see this are helena missiles which are logged and loaded into the helicopter this is the rudra this helicopter that you see here is the rudra and finally the last image that you see which is where we have a launcher on the ground placed on the ground itself here this one this is the man portable anti tank guided missile this system can be carried by a person and then travel on a shoulders okay so now did you understand the different missiles which are there in the integrated guided missile development program of india so i'll just repeat once again we have the agni series say with me the next one is prithvi then we have trishul then we have akash and finally now i hope this concept is clear also the current affairs regarding this we have helena which is the army version and the next one which is called dhruvastra which is the air force version is that clear thank you